okay, so according to Tapology, the first fight in the card for Invicta FC 51 is supposed to be about in the strawweight division, 115 pounds, between Tanya Nijar and Sayuri Cannon. The thing I say about this being supposed to be the first bout is the way this one looks right now, according to Tapology, this may be like an exhibition bout, may not be available to bet on. I've seen some lines out there, then the lines actually went back down. So with this fight right here, can't be sure it's even going to be available to bet on. I'll give you a synopsis of what we found out about it and how we feel about the potential winner and whatever else. But uh, a lot of X's and Y's and different variables here that we really couldn't, you know, fill in. In the case of Ciari Cannon, she's been out for a while, no film on her. So, you know, you kind of get where we're going with this. From a betting perspective, you're probably better off just fast forwarding to the next fight in the video if you actually want some some real breakdown knowledge because this fight right here it's going to be very peanut butter and jelly and not a lot of actual you know meat to it so but with that said let's start into it tanya is one and oh from canada from british columbia canada to be exact 28 years old five foot two in height no reach number on her she trains out of toshito mma as for sayuri cannon she's two and oh so she's got one more fight under her belt she's out of columbia and we have nothing else in her other than the fact that she trades out of Club Equipo Serrano. Uh, look, these gems that they list on Tapology, sometimes they're not accurate. So these fighters may both not even be at those respective gyms. And in the case of Sayuri Cannon, we don't have much to go on. When you pull up her actual Tapology of who she's fought, she fought about a year ago. So about April of 2021. So she didn't fight at all last year. So coming off about a year and, year and a few months layoff. She fought Elizabeth Avila. She won that fight by decision. Now, Elizabeth Avila is carrying a record of one and four. So kind of a young fighter. Her prior fight was against Yvonne Ocampo, and that was back in 2016. <laughs> okay, Yvonne Ocampo is officially 0-1. All right, so we have a fight in 2016 about six, seven years ago. We got a fight about a year ago against Elizabeth Avila, and then she had a 2018 amateur fight against Andrea Payne. And if you're doing the year math there, yeah, she had an amateur fight 2018, a pro fight 2016. Yeah, so what I'm telling you is we have no clue. Whatever information we have off of Tapology may not even be legitimate, <laughs> put it that way. So she's coming from pretty much a hole in the wall, coming from Colombia. Not for nothing, Colombia is not known for having an amazing regional scene for fighting. Um, there's maybe one or two fighters that I could think of that have been like in Bellator or on the edges of the UFC that are from Colombia. Now, with that said, I'm not saying Colombian people are not strong and not, you know, fighters, probably in boxing, there's a few more than boxing, but when it comes to mixed martial arts, not very established. In the case of Sayuri Cannon, I have to talk about things like this because I don't have much to go off to be able to give you an analysis that's backed up by numbers and research and having watched her on film because we haven't watched her on film, right? So this would be the prototypical red flags. Big time layoff, hasn't fought in a while, no no, no opponents of any kind of, you know, um, real competitiveness. Matter of fact, the combined record of all three of her opponents, her one amateur fight, which was actually after her first pro fight, whatever the combined record is two and nine for those three opponents we could see two things one she comes in here looks totally different we underestimated her we went on the numbers here and didn't you know didn't see something and she comes out looks great the other reality is she comes in here and just looks really bad just looks like what we're seeing here which is just uh not much to go off of all right so as for tanya we did get to see about a minute of film on her it wasn't much to go off she fought an opponent that was two and two overall in that fight and that was her one pro fight because she's one and oh um she had a seven year break between her first pro fight and her last amateur bout i'm assuming she was you know diving in doing the training getting better no i i imagine she you know probably went away from mixed martial arts did something else and now came back to it maybe she saw all the money that the fighters are making nowadays and she wants to jump on the train jk in any case uh she looked okay in this fight that we watched on film and let me just bring up her topology. It was the fight against, excuse me, against Alibeth Miliron. Interesting name, Alibeth Miliron. Alibeth Miliron, who's two and two, based upon what I saw in film, wasn't you know wasn't anything special, and uh, she loses the fight by a round one rear naked choke. So you get a chance to see Sayuri. Sayuri, I'm, I'm sorry, Sayuri. You get a chance to see Tanya Nijar have some grappling skills, have a submission. I'm going to just assume that based upon the fact that Tanya has a little more relevant experience, um, has fought four total mixed martial arts bouts between her amateur career, which is all back like 2015, 
Um, I think she probably gets gets the win here. Um, but man, stay away from this fight from a betting perspective. There's not much to you want to get involved with. I'd say if you're going to get involved with some props, maybe Tanya by decision and the fight going over two and a half rounds. You know, we get two low level fighters. They're just going back and forth. And the weight class again is what? 115 pounds. Yeah. And then again, what Tanya had a ch- rear naked choke. Maybe she comes in there because she a rear naked choke. <laughs> okay. So this fight, like I said, it may not be available to bet on. Don't sweat it. If you're a fan of Tanya's or if you're watching this channel and you know her and you're rooting for her, you go, girl. Uh, if you're a fan of Sayura, Sayuri Cannon and we've underestimated her, lo siento, as they say in Spanish. I apologize. We didn't have anything to go off of, but maybe she comes out here and surprises people. From a betting perspective, the money line that we had projected for this fight, excuse me, give me a second, um, for Cannon and Najar. We don't have a protected money line. That's right, because this fight, I don't think even is going to open in the books. But if I have to guess offhand, I'm going to say Najar opens at like minus 210, and you've got uh, Cannon on the side is like, you know, plus 160, plus 170 range. And even at dog money, I wouldn't touch either one of them. I wouldn't touch, you know, Najar at minus two to one odds. I would just maybe sprinkle that over two and a half. If you're going to do like a, a long parlay on every fight in the card, do the distance props. You know, with these women's fights, I feel like, you know, light, especially lighter women's fights, 105 pounds and stuff, you know, just take those distance props, part of them, have some fun with those, and maybe you're better off than trying to choose sides, going to those ugly scorecards and yada, yada. So anyway, the pick is Tanya Najar to win, and we're on him to win the fight by decision. Let's move on.